Today it's raining outside, so on the agenda I've got a little bit of canning and preserving to do and I'm going to bring you along. So not too long ago, um, I found this new wave pressure canner and cooker at our local farm store on a closeout. So I went ahead and bought it because we needed a bigger rice cooker in our house and it had a lot more features than just a bigger rice cooker. And one of those features is a canning feature and it intrigued me. Now I have heard that technically you're not supposed to use electric pressure canners because they're kind of impossible to calibrate. So this is a rebel canning procedure and this isn't me instructing you to do this. I'm just showing you what I do in my home. What you do with your own machine is at your own risk. I feel like for me, it's a relatively low risk because the company has done their own testing. They make these claims on their packaging. So in the very least, I've got somebody with something to lose if something goes wrong um, in my corner. So I'm going to be tweaking their directions a little bit because from what I know of regular canning in your average um, weighted gauge pressure canner, um, and what I know from the standard canning rules, I'm going to be applying those more to their rules and um, it should go well. I did a batch of bone broth the other day and this is one of those jars. It came out well. It's not the most gelatinous broth that, I, that I've ever made. This is um, one of the jars that I had put in the refrigerator. It does kind of cling to the side of the jar a little. But for small batch canning, just to get some bones out of the freezer, this is awesome. So, let's start. So whether or not you grow your own food at home, you probably amass a bone bag in your freezer if you've made bone broth before. We grow a lot of our own protein here. My husband hunts. We grow rabbit, chicken, quail, etc. Um, and so we amass quite a lot of bones. Um, so what we like to do is put the bones in the freezer until we've got enough and a free moment like on this rainy day to make a batch of bone broth. So these are frozen. I'm going to be putting as many bones as I can in this inner pot to this cooker up to about three quarters full. got as many bones as I can fit in here comfortably. You don't want to fill it too high. The directions don't want you bringing anything above the four quart line or one gallon. So we're going to leave it where we're at. Got the bones in there. I'm going to pour in water to barely cover the bones. You don't have to use warm water. You can use cold water. The pressure cooker will get it up to temperature just fine. We're right up to the maximum fill line. If I turn the cooker here, you can see the fill line right here. It's got the letters in reverse, so you can tell from the inside of the pot where your lines are at. So you can tell, full. Four quarter liters or 16 cups is full. At this point, you can put in whatever aromatics you want peppercorns, bay leaves, thyme, herbs of any kind. I'm just going to throw in one and a half bay leaves into this and a splash of apple cider vinegar. My label is missing. This helps release all of the goodness of the bones. It would probably have been easier for me to fill all of this with the inner pot inside the, the cooker. But sometimes I do things the hard way. That wasn't too hard. So, pot in, closed. This light illuminated says it, shore lock on, so I know that I've got everything closed as well as it can be. All right, and on this particular cooker, I'm going to have to run the cycle twice to get the broth as rich as I like. You could run the cycle once and it would just be a lighter broth. That is up to you. I have all day, so I'm gonna let it go all day. I'm going to hit the meat and stew button 
You could probably hit any of the buttons really. You just want it to cook on high. And I'm going to take this timer all the way up until it hits the maximum, which I believe is like an hour and 40 minutes. We'll see. Yep. Okay, so we're at an hour and 40 minutes. I'm going to hit start. And it's preheating. Here's another look at the pressure cooker that I bought. Cooker, canner. When we get to the canning part of it, we'll be using this setting. But right now we're just making our bone broth. And I clicked meat and stew because I've got bones in there. I probably could have clicked poultry or soup and it would have still been on the high setting. And up here, when this thing comes up to pressure, this button will come up, letting you know that pressure is in the pot. Here is the steam vent this is the security measure and this is our weighted gauge this is one of the reasons that i do trust this process for canning even though technically you're not supposed to use electric canners according to the national center of home food preservation because it does have a built-in weighted gauge and weighted gauges never need calibrating so i feel like this is a good feature for this particular cooker here we've got some buttons that quick release button it lifts it lifts our weighted gauge back there and off sets it back down so if if we were ever cooking and needed to release steam quickly we could lift that up and the steam just pours right out we're not going to be using that feature during canning but we could quick release when we're done cooking the broth in order to open the cooker sooner we're going to leave it like that so we can build pressure okay our cooker is at pressure. It's going to count down now from an hour and 40 minutes to zero. And once it ends this first initial cook time, I'm going to start it over with the same process, hitting the meat stew button, increasing the time to an hour and 40 minutes, and hitting the start stop button to let it go for another full cycle. You can tell here that we've got pressure in the pot. We're all good and we are up to our 10 pounds of pressure now, cooking down our bones to make that broth. All right, so first cycle is done. It automatically goes to warm, um, and I guess it warms for two hours. I wanna run this a second time, so I'm gonna hit stop. I'm not gonna take the pressure down. We're going to click meat stew again, increase this to as far as it'll go, which is an hour and 40 minutes. and start. There, and it was automatically at pressure, so we start our second round immediately. All right, so we're done making the actual bone broth. It's still hot inside, but our red pressure um, nozzle on the top that lets us know there's pressure in the chamber is down. It's been in the warm mode for quite a while. I've been outside, but let's take a peek. All right, our bone broth is all done. What I'm gonna do next is strain all the bones and little bits out, and then we can start canning up our four pints. So it may seem all sorts of wrong, but once these bones cool down, I'm gonna go feed these to my chickens. If it makes anybody feel better, these are mostly rabbit bones and not chicken. But the leftover minerals that are in the bones are great for the hens. It'll help them have really strong eggshells. So this broth is still really, really hot. The look of what we got, it should be about a gallon because that's all I can fit in here. 
Now, as far as canning the broth goes, I can only fit maximum of four pints in here. This is a really awesome option for small batch canning. Like if you've got some leftover soup that you want to put away for shelf-stable lunches. That's what my husband, he takes chili to work often. Um, smaller batches of bone broth. Generally, we like to can bone broth in quarts. But there is the odd recipe that I do use that calls for a cup of broth or two cups of broth. And these smaller pint-sized jars will be awesome to grab for that. So I'm going to get four pints loaded up with about an inch head space. The rest of it is going to go in dinner. I'm sorry if this blue one screws up anybody's perfectionism. When I'm canning bone broth, I like to use this cone sieve to take out any of the smaller meaty bits out of the broth. Now it's time to can these up. We're going to be canning these pint size jars of broth for 20 minutes. The canning setting does default at 20 minutes. Just make sure that if you're canning anything that needs a longer processing time according to the USDA rules that you increase the processing time on the unit. I won't have to do that today because bone broth cans for 20 minutes when you're doing pints so I'll be all set with the factory default on that. So I've got to go get the inner pot, I just cleaned it out, and we have a little canning rack that we're going to use. Here's a little canning rack. I actually had to buy this separately off of their website. Um, I kind of wished that if they advertise that you can can with it, that they included all of the things that you need to can with the unit, but this was not included in the box. I guess that's maybe why it was on sale, but alas, it was not hard to obtain this rack. You need this rack in order to can in the unit. You don't wanna be putting your jars on the bottom of this pot here, they will break. It fits perfectly in there. And then we will load our four pint jars. Okay, so the cooker requires you to cover the jars with hot water up to one quarter of the jar. So it takes about six cups of water, hot water. Let me put that in. Our jars are loaded on top of the rack with hot water poured in around the jars up to a quarter up the side of the jar. I hope that makes sense. So if this is the jar that we chose to can in today, our water level would be about right here on the jars. Okay, so I've got everything locked and loaded here. We're going to hit stop because it's still trying to uh, warm from when we were making the broth. Canning, it defaults for 20 minutes. Remember, that's the correct time for what I've got in there. And start. 
We'll leave it here and let it do its thing for now. So this is one of the reasons that I trust the internal calibration of this machine. Um, you'll notice that there is pressure in the chamber, so this button is up, but it's still preheating. So it's not quite up to the internal pressure of 10 pounds that it's looking for as its target pressure. So I, I think I trust the internal calibration for my altitude because of this. We have pressure in the chamber, but it's still not enough to start our canning time. All right, it just beeped at me that we're up to pressure. Our countdown for 20 minutes is set, and we will come back once the pressure canning process is finished. Okay, our 20 minutes is up, but our button that's showing we have pressure in the chamber, that is still activated. So right now we're gonna wait for that button to go down before we can do the next step. Well, it's been a little bit over an hour and the button showing that there is pressure in the chamber is now down, showing that there is probably minimal pressure in the chamber. So when you're canning with your normal pressure canner, once your dial gauge is down to zero or once your little button comes down, you know it's safe to remove the rocker. Here with these pressure canners, you're going to lift or push the uh, vent release button and that will pull this toggle up and act just like your rocker on your normal pressure canner to help vent for 10 minutes after your normal canning time. So this is where we remove the weight and wait 10 minutes when we're canning in a normal pressure canner, the electric pressure canner. This is what that looks like. So we are allowing a little bit of the cool air to enter the chamber, cool the jars down slowly for the next 10 minutes, and then we can open it up and see. Okay, so we've been venting steam for 10 minutes. We did the steam vent after our little pressurized button went down. This is just to assist the canner in like equalizing to room temperature. If those jars cool down too fast, they're gonna siphon and your jars may not seal. So we're gonna open this up and see what we got. Not gravy. What is it? Hearty chicken soup. Okay. Sealed. If they don't seal, we need to stick them in the refrigerator and use them within a week. But I think they're going to. They look good. That scared me. It scared me too. We got a burp from that one in the back. And from you. Did you say burp? Yes, I said burp, sweetie. Okay, it's the next day and you can see our jars all sealed perfectly. I've got them labeled and they're ready for the shelf. Um, if your pressure cooker doesn't specify that it's also a canner, please don't try this. Um, this particular one that I had, the New Wave pressure cooker canner, six quart, does say that you can use it for canning. And so I tried it out and it worked well. I will say that their cool down method don't do that. <laughs> they tell you that when the canning time is done, just to quick release the pressure and you can remove the jars, you're going to get siphoning if you follow their directions. So I kind of combined their directions and what I know from the National Center of Home Food Preservation, and we didn't have any siphoning or leaking or anything. The water that I put in the pan in the pot inside the cooker didn't have any residual oils or grease or anything. So every bit of broth that I put in these jars stayed in the jars and sealed perfectly. Wait for that pressure, the little red pressure button to fall down, then press the pressure release button so that the unit can cool slowly and all of your precious broth can stay in the jar. 
So I hope that helped explain a few things. I hope it helped give you a little bit of confidence in using quite a simple machine um, for our small batch canning processes. Like I said, it defaults at 20 minutes for the pressure canning time, but you can take that up to meet uh, the recipe that you are using. We sometimes will can leftover chili and things, and that would take a longer time. That would be no problem in that canner. Only for four pints, but sometimes that's all I've got to can. And I don't have to worry about trying to haul the huge canner, that's what this is, haul that huge canner down just for a few jars. So this is great for small batch canning. Try it, but use some logic when you're comparing uh, their methods versus approved methods.